Well, hopefully you've been following our Hogno Snake Vivarium build. Today we're on the last phase of setting up this Vivarium for our Hogno Snake. So we get a lot of comments at Sid and Size Snakes about our setups. And if you look behind us here, we've got a couple of them that we've already set up for our, our, our popular snakes here, our Hogno Snakes. I'm here today with Jennifer Fox. Uh, she is an admin of uh, Destination Hognose on Facebook. And these are all the setups that she's created. So we're going to talk to her about setting up the ideal vivarium for the ideal hogno snake. Tell us about it, Jen. What sort of substrates we're using? Well, I'd always start by asking the breeder or the person I'm buying the snake from what they're most used to. Um, in this case, we know the snake we're getting is actually used for a naturalistic substrate. So hogno snakes are native to the short grass prairies of North America. And the kind of soil they use is um, kind of a sandy loam. It's quite loose. They can dig around in it easily. A lot of people don't realise hognoses don't actually make their own burrows. They tend to steal them of other mammals. So it's more about them being able to make little tunnels, dig around in it for food and express that natural behaviour. So what we're going to be using is a mix of 70% organic topsoil, which has no chemicals in it, it's all pet safe, and 30% play sand. And then we're going to add a little bit of Arcadia Arid Earth mix into that as well, just to give it a little bit of extra texture. Helps it get less dusty and helps it last a bit longer as well. Yeah, what you mentioned there is really, really important, isn't it? Using those organic things, making sure there's no chemicals in it. You can't just use any old topsoil. That's really important. If you've got things like uh, fungicides, pesticides, anything like that that could potentially cause harm to our snakes which we don't want at all so go naturalistic you know and uh, let's uh, let's talk about how we're going to actually furnish this vivarium now okay we're going to start with the substrate the hognose we're getting is a young female so as she gets older it's going to be really important that she can gain more musculature through digging and also that when she makes messes that we can scoop them out easily the topsoil and sand will clump around that really nicely the treated wood chips are great for very small snakes but as they get bigger that can become a little bit of a problem especially with the females because they do musk they make a lot of mess so i've actually pre-made this because it can be a little bit damp when you first get it out um, this is actually mixed two weeks ago so hopefully Hopefully it should be nice and dry for our semi-arid plain species. Okay, this has already been mostly pre-mixed. I'm just going to give it a bit of a mix around with my hands and also kind of check for any stones or little lumps, bits of wood in there that might be in there. And it is, it is topsoil, so sometimes you do find foreign objects like a bits of plastic or anything like that so it's important to get them out first yeah exactly and you know you're just doing exactly what your hog nose would do which is just kind of run your thing run yourself through there run your fingers through it and it's really good having that topsoil sand mix it really helps their muscle tone doesn't it yeah hugely i say the lignin cell is great for babies where they're very small and there isn't a lot of resistance in it um or aspen if you're in the us i don't i know not everyone can get lignin cell um, but this will really massively improve their overall quality of life and their health. And that dark soil, especially for like basking, that's going to help with the thermal mass as well. And what's this we're using here? This is Arcadia Arid Earth Mix, which you would normally use the bioactive, but it also seems to massively prolong how long you can go without a deep clean for a naturalistic mix too. As you can see, we're kind of just up to where the base of that cork background is. And hognose snakes are really popular now, aren't they? They're sort of nice small species. They don't take up too much room as opposed to sort of the larger body species, do they? Yeah, I mean, they vary a bit. The females um, in particular can get bigger. Um, my girls, uh, Chloe and Sylvie here, neither of them are that big. They're both uh, less than three foot. I know the female who's coming to me as well is relatively small. She'll still stay relatively small. They can get up to four foot. You can get some really big female hognoses. They get up to maybe 600 grams, but even so by snake standards, we're still talking pretty small. That would small. be a whopper. <laughs> yeah, that would be a, a huge, a huge female hognose, but a very small snake by most snake standards. And yeah. the males get to stay very, very small indeed. The lady who's coming to join us here, her dad is a whole 65 grams, I believe. He's really tiny. Much smaller than my boys. An interesting fact about you, you used to be absolutely terrified of snakes. I did. Uh, do you would like to meet the gentleman who uh, got me over my fear of snakes? This is Jasper. Who, uh, who was your snake, in fact, that I stole? <laughs> yeah, I still got the receipts for this one. <laughs> so what is it about the hognose snakes that you enjoy most? I think the 
were very interactive as in fact Jasper is demonstrating at the moment. Um, they have quite big personalities considering they're little snakes. So if you want a snake that is relatively small and easy to handle, um, is quite robust, they're quite stout bodied as well, um, and is active during the day, is very interactive, has strong opinions on things. Uh, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know about you, I personally find their body language really easy to read. Um, compared to some snakes, they're not shy about their opinions. Um, they're a little bit different from other snakes, they don't constrict for example, so when you feed them you have to be quite aware of that. Um, but also because of that they, they quite like a lot of body contact when you hold them. Hi ah, Jasper. And he's quite big for a male. Oh he's huge for a male, yeah, he's 225 grams, so he's almost female sized. You wouldn't normally get a male that big, he's uh, very much the upper end of what you'd get for a male. Now we talked about the cork background didn't we? we um, did, yeah. The cork backgrounds that we use, you, you find that you end up climbing don't you? They do, as, as I said they're not constrictors so they can't naturally climb very well but they do enjoy climbing and we know that in the wild they will try and climb uh, reeds, bits of grass and things so that they can hang out over ponds when they're hunting. So they can climb, but not very well. Their bellies are very smooth, but for this, certainly they can kind of work their way up the side of the cork bark and they can climb vines. And it's really good to be able to give them that additional choice to express that behavior too. Okay, so what are we putting in this vivarium now? We're gonna start by putting in some hides. So we're gonna start with the walmart. As I said, although they will burrow, they don't necessarily make burrows to live in. So you do have to provide them with actually lots of hides because they like a lot of cover. You can see where that's just level with the top of the probe there. And what height is this? This is a... This is a Komodo basking platform or a rock den. Um, this one, the old style ones used to be really heavy, this one's a little bit thinner, it's resin cast. I've already been over this one with sandpaper, made sure there's no sharp edges so I can run my finger over this. Make sure it's nice and safe, it's been rinsed, it's been um, hosed down with F10 just to make sure there's no plastic or any, anything on it from the production process. So it's all nice and clean. We're actually going to make a mezzanine on this side because I know this young lady does enjoy climbing so we're going to make sure she has that opportunity so we're going to put a mezzanine in add a little cool head underneath it this would be very small for a full-size female but I know that she's quite small still she's not yet two years old so we're going to pop that underneath there and we have an expression here at certain size snakes and it's when we're making and furnishing and enriching a vivarium for a snake. We always go uh, to the expression think snake. Uh, people tend to decorate the vivarium for their own eyes without considering what the snake sees as well. And people generally want to see the snake in their environment and they have this huge great open expanse here at the front of the vivarium. And because of that people generally find their animals don't go to the front. They tend to go to the back where they got those hiding opportunities. They want to feel secure. So if you look at all these vivariums here, so we're just going to pan around the room. You can see we bring all our decorations to the front. So they got hiding opportunities right at the front of the vivarium. And because of that, just like this, we generally find some of our creatures at the front of the vivariums. So let's have a look over here. They're well, mostly asleep at this time of yeah, day. Mostly, it is late in the day, but it gives you an idea of what we're sort of trying to achieve here in our vivariums. We get all that decoration right at the front. I've popped a bit of driftwood in there, partly so she has a little bit of a ramp to get up to this mezzanine level, so she's quite a, a young snake still, but also so that she's got more cover as she's moving about the place. This has little holes in it she can get under. We're going to pop a little ramp up here again. We'll bank the earth up there slightly. Okay, we've got another essential, a small water bowl to go in. Eventually she's going to have a water bowl the size of my girl, so it'll be a really big one like this so she can get right in there and bask and lay in the water, bathe. Um, if she needs to shed she can use that and see the comparison by size. But where she's still quite, uh, quite young that would be absolutely fine for her. And then I'm going to give her a little bit of cover by popping this plant in so that, again, talking about cover down the front, so that if she wants she can kind of use this and scuttle along underneath here, reach her water bowl easily, move behind, between her hides and feel like she's uh, nicely covered. We use a lot of cork. Use a lot of cork. <laughs> use a lot of cork. You're looking at all the vivariums. <laughs> 
most of them have got corks in one description or another. They make excellent hides, they're natural. They don't rot. They don't rot. Pop a bit of grass there for her. We're going to put in some basking rocks. So we've got DHPs in here, which do project um, IRA heat which means we need some surfaces that are going to absorb heat. So obviously we've got the soil, which is great. We've got the platform here, but we're also going to pop in some nice heat absorbing stones from our local aquatic centre. And if you missed the video about uh, the electrics inside the Verum, do check it out on the links. We talk about the DHPs and the heat spectrums, the IRA and IRB that they emit and the differences between heat sources. Okay, like that. So what I find they quite often do is they'll come out of their hide. These will warm up really nicely under the heat and the light and these will get nice and warm so she can actually come up here and she can lay on these rocks. Um, this is a nice smooth one but I've got two textured ones here so that if she wants to use them for shedding for example they can rub their faces on it get the shed started. Uh, my girls as well I have to say because the girls do musk if they're gonna musk it's gonna be on the stones which I thoroughly approve of because they're really easy to clean but it's the, it's the warmth essentially that helps them do that and avo avoid nasty things like bulb tail which females can get. So all my girls have nice big basking rocks. We're gonna add some vines. And these are like your standard exoterra type things. Yeah they are, they're, uh, they're silk vines so they're, again, they're, they are a fabric, they're not real but they're really easy to clean. Again, that's the advantage with this cork background and, and doing mechanical fixes. You can just kind of tuck that. I'm not sure you can see it. We'll get, get one out in a minute, Shay. Yeah, you can just see that. Yeah. You can see how it's just poked in behind that cork background there. And a little poke of it. Yeah, and she'll absolutely be able to kind of hang on to this and climb about and stuff. Um, hence, we have our cage and she can get around there safely. So, if she wanted to get up and climb around and make her way down, she's got that as an option. Yeah, we'd have to stick to the standard grey and brown yeah, and greens. Uh, I'm a big fan of putting colour in the vivariums. Just for our, our purposes. Snakes don't really mind, but... The snakes don't really mind, though. We're just going to use the cork bark, pin that in place, and then wind this around a little bit, and give kind of some nice cover down here. These are kind of bendable wires. Let's see where they're going to go. I think a little bit, a bit up here so she's got some somewhere to hide in. Quite nice. And then we'll drape that down there. There we go. It's always important not that to block those it? vents or, uh, or yeah, the temperature probe as well. Making sure these are nice and clear at all times. And in the, in the videos that we had before we talked about probe placement, you see where this substrate is. And the hog nose is, you know, he's not going to get past this. I mean, this is quite a quite a substantial distance between the substrate and the probe. So if, you, if you've got a large body snake like a boa or something like that, that probe placement is going to be much, much higher because they're going to have that opportunity to thermal block it and cause real problems for your snake. So that's how we do it here. Now this is set up, I'll be taking some temperatures once this is run for a little bit and this is all warmed up. And I'll be taking them here, so on the top of the hot hide. I'll be taking them up here, see where the light's kind of going. I'll be taking one underneath here. This is the coolest part, obviously you can see this is the most cool, the most dark part. So if she needed to cool off, she can come straight back here. The, this particular substrate is really great for, for um, thermal regulation because they can get right under the substrate to the, the cooler, more damp earth, and then they can cool themselves right down. So this, right, this bit right at the back here, this will stay at about 22 degrees, whereas this basking spot will potentially get up to 32, 33 degrees, and that's about as hot as you want it for a hog nose. Other than popping the glass back in, that will be it for now. Um, obviously we'll see how she goes. She is a new snake. I'll be seeing what kind of things she she likes doing. Sounds silly. They do have opinions. Hi Jasper. <laughs> and you'll notice with these vivariums, you know, this is a Viv Exotic type, and you can see how he's using that nose there and just digging away and digging away. This is why we've got to really secure the wires. You'll also notice there are a lot of locks on these vivariums. There's a lot of locks. <laughs> uh, a lot of the, the, the vivariums we've got, they've just got these standard rubber wedgies. These guys, you really, really need to secure those vents and secure the glass. Make mm. sure there's there's nowhere that they can. They'll just, you know, you can see them there. They'll just there's a gap. 
they'll just prize that right open. Yeah, and he's he's a male. He has quite a small head. Um, Sylvie, who's my one of my females here, um, managed to get all the way up, get her nose underneath one of the top vents, which was glue gunned in, but wasn't glue gunned enough. Opened the whole thing up, and thankfully she's really lazy and didn't go very far. Um, but it absolutely is a thing. They are cage breakers, so you do need to keep an eye on these guys. Have all the locks. Make sure everything is secure. Well, thanks for following us on this build. Do like and share this video out if you've enjoyed the video. Leave some comments, ask some questions, and hopefully we're going to do some more videos later on introducing these guys one by one so you actually get to meet the personalities and all the hog nose. Just like to say a massive thank you for Jennifer for showing us how she furnishes a vivarium, and catch up with you soon. Bye for now.